3D scanning, the process of analyzing a real-world object or environment to collect data on its shape and sometimes its appearance, like the color and texture of the object, and then using that collected data to construct digital 3D models. At VisionMiner, we use and sell a full line of 3D scanners, as you can see on the wall here. Uh, so check out visionminer.com slash einscan to see all those. But right now, I'm actually going to talk about the different types of 3D scanning so you can get an idea of what's actually out there. So first, let's talk about the different types of scanning technology. 3D scanning actually comes in many forms. Some of you might already be familiar with uh, CAT scans. They create 3D models of the insides of the human body, and your modern smartphone sitting in your pocket right now also 3D scans your face to unlock itself. Professional 3D scanners can use a variety of different technologies, each with their own pros and cons. Now, these can easily be split into two categories, contact and non-contact. For this video, we're going to focus mostly on the latter. Now, contact scanning is technologies like CMMs or coordinate measuring machines, basically taking a very sensitive probe and running it along the surface of an object, recording data as it goes and comparing it to its digital CAD model. Pretty much anywhere where accuracy down to the smallest measurement is of utmost importance, you can find a CMM machine. Non-contact scanning technologies like these four, H and HX and Pro HD, and even this uh, Einscan SP right here, use a variety of technologies to gather all their data. So let's talk about some of the different types of technology. Firstly, you've got TOF or time of flight. Now this uses a laser light to probe the subject of a scan. And the laser rangefinder gets the distance of a surface by timing the round trip speed of a pulse of light. Now, this is usually great for large-scale objects, entire rooms, even entire buildings. Unfortunately, like the iPhone, as we showed in another video, they're just not super accurate with tiny details, and the resolution of the scans don't get anywhere close to the next things on the list. Which brings me to handheld lasers. Now, these use triangulation with an actual laser and multiple sensors. And uh, the lineup that we have here, that's the Einscan HX, which will get details down to 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns. Another benefit is that it works great with dark and reflective textures and objects, making it a step above the structured light, which we're about to talk about in a second. Another benefit is that it works with dark and reflective objects, unlike the next technology, which is structured and modulated light. Now this is what most scanners use. Uh, it basically projects structured light, think like a QR code where it's black and white and patterns and everything, as well as modulating bars of light that change back and forth. And then it reads this data, calculates the shape uh, and size of the part using algorithms. And lastly, we have photogrammetry. Now this basically takes many photographs uh, from a lot of different angles around an object or a part, and then calculates the differences and chunks out a solid 3D model. However, the biggest disadvantage of this is really that it's not measuring while it's scanning, unlike pretty much all the other methods. But it can work really, really well, especially if you're on a budget. Uh, depending on your photographs and style of photography, it can also be very, very accurate. So, all these technologies basically gather a ton of points. They're basically taken into CAD or something like Geomagic Essentials and reverse engineered into native CAD shapes. So yes, for those of you wondering, can I scan something and then basically import that into SolidWorks as an actual parametric design? Uh, not directly, but there's tools that make it really, really easy. So definitely check out our other videos and Geomagic Wrap, Geomagic Essentials, really, really good software. So let's get into why would you want to 3D scan? What, what, are 3D, what are people using 3D scanning for in the world? There's a lot of stuff, so let's go down the list. The first and most obvious application is recreating something in 3D. But moreover, validation of manufactured part dimensions. When somebody makes something, they want to make sure it came out the way they expected it to or the way it was supposed to. And you can actually 3D scan and compare that model to a 3D model and see exactly where you're off with heat maps and, and all kinds of stuff. It's a really, really good application. Uh, you can also use it to get sizing and or spacing of parts for designing around a coordinate system. So if I know that I've got these holes here and here, and I want to scan that and then build my part out, it's a great way to do it. 
Uh, you can also do scanning as a full-on business or doing it as a service for other businesses or even for people like body scans. Those guys co-create up in uh, LA. They just scanned Snoop Jog and, and a bunch of other rappers for some big project, and they're using the HX uh, for that. And uh, I mean, they're, a lot of their business revolves around 3D scanning people and printing them out or things like that. Now, it doesn't have to just be for entertainment. It's also used in medical uh, applications. So foot scanning for shoes uh, and other body parts for prosthetics or custom fit clothing. Prosthetics is huge, man. Like scanning somebody's nub and actually making a fully custom fit prosthetic that fits their body geometry perfectly, unlike ever before where you would just, you know, stuff it with a bunch of different foam and padding and things like that. It's a real step up. So you can make something to literally fit someone exactly. You can also scan an object that has mounting points and then completely redesign your part around that scan and put that into a simulator or something like that. Uh, it's used in construction and civil engineering. Uh, it's used in real estate. If you've checked out any new homes and seen that 3D preview, that's a company called Matterport most of the time. There's many companies where they actually scan everything and take pictures and you can walk around in a virtual environment and it does it all for you. But that's 3D scanning. Law enforcement, they're using this at crime scenes to get bullet trajectories. Uh, cultural heritage, preservation of relics, statues, paintings, items. There's an entire company based around this called 3D Scan the World. Uh, the archival of digital inventories. This one's big. You can scan a warehouse full of old molds, parts, and versions and save all those digitally instead of in a warehouse where you're paying property taxes and electrical and all this other stuff. I mean, you take a company like Kirby Vacuums. If they took, they've got a hundred plus years of molds for their metal vacuum cleaners. These things are legit, right? But they have warehouses full of all their old molds. And they could literally take all of that, store it digitally, and you've got a digital inventory. Anyway, there's a million ways you could use this. So let's talk real quick about things you should consider before getting a 3D scanner. Number one, how accurate does it really need to be? You've got from zero to 10 microns is like aerospace grade metrology. This Fin is exactly where it needs to be. Then you've got about 10 to 50 microns, which is industrial part validation. So you can take small parts, put them in, get the heat map, and you're going to see where it varies. For reverse engineering, you're looking anywhere from 50 to 300 microns, and then 300 microns and above to about one millimeter. If you've got replication, you're getting reference points, uh, you're getting the general geometry of something. Uh, another question we get a lot is, do the $70,000 3D scanners still suck like 10 years ago? The good news is, no, they don't suck like 10 years ago. The even better news is, the $10,000 3D scanners are frankly matching up pretty well to the $70,000 scanners in 2021. So, something to consider. Get some demos. Get some data. Get some, you know, um, get some sample data. Or get on a call with me here at Vision Miner or one of the other guys, and we'll actually scan some stuff and show you exactly how it works. Or you can check out one of our mini videos. So get on a demo, and we'll show you, and we'll go, you, go through it with you and actually show you what it's like to use. Another question that we get is, can't you just use your iPhone or do photogrammetry? You can for some applications. Uh, the iPhone really just doesn't get fine details. Nowhere near reverse engineering. Maybe for reverse engineering, but not for anything close to metrology. And photogrammetry doesn't actually measure anything. So while it can be very budget friendly, it doesn't necessarily get you the results that you want. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave your questions in the comments below. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and want more like it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one.